At the moment, when we want to handle our games, when we want to print them or store them into our games list, we're using a bunch of strings. We're not really organizing that data in any way. And there is a better way of doing it. We're going to create our own type to represent the game. In web development, there is a very common design pattern called MVC, which stands for Model View Controller. The view would be the user interface. The controller is a class that handles the communication between the view and a database. And the model is a class that represents the shape of the data. Essentially, what we're doing here is using the MVC pattern in a very simple way. But let's create a model to see how it works. First, I'm creating a new folder, right-clicking on a project and choosing Add and Folder. And that's the Models folder. And inside that folder, we're going to create a new class called Game. Once the class is created, first of all, let's get rid of the unused directives. And the namespace in this video is different. So just bear in mind that the namespace should be the name of your project. But here, we're going to use a new feature of C Sharp, starting from C Sharp 10. And that is using a namespace without a block. From C Sharp 10, if we add a semicolon after the namespace, the block is eliminated. And that's a tiny change, but it makes our code a little bit cleaner and I'm all for clean code. In the game class, we're going to declare a private field. So let's start with the score integer. So we have this underlying score variable that can't be accessed from outside this class. So we're going to create another variable and that one is going to be public. And that's the variable that's going to be exposed to the other classes. To do that, we're going to use getters and setters. A getter is a method that retrieves the data and a setter, as the name says, allows us to modify that field. And the private field that's not exposed to other classes is called backing field. And this public variable is a property of a class. There's a lot of debate about if and when you should use this pattern with a backing field and a getter and a setter. But this is widely used by C Sharp developers. It's present in pretty much every application I've ever seen. And in fact, this is so commonly used that from C Sharp 3, auto properties were introduced into the language. And that's a shorter way to write properties. So we can see here the access modifier, the type, the name, and then the methods. But it's important to know that even though we are writing less code, it's still transformed into the code that's commented out. So it still does the exact same thing. So let's create the other properties of the game class. We're also going to have a date, which is of the date time type, and a type, which is a string. So what's really important to remember is that a model class will hold properties that are related. So the game class has a set of properties and these are characteristics of a game. So let's see how we're going to use that to make our code more organized. Going back to the helpers class where we have the add to history method, instead of adding a string to the games list, I'm going to add a new game. So I'm using an instance of the game class to add a game. And then I have to assign each property with a value from the game that just finished. So for the date, we're going to use the now method from the date time class. The score will be the game score integer coming as an argument into the method. And the type is the game type argument. And the compiler doesn't like it at the moment because our list was declared as a list of strings. So we need to change that to a list of game. And I've also noticed that as I was playing with this code, I changed the access modifiers to public and forgot to change it back. So let's change them back to internal to avoid confusion. And I've also changed the name of the getGames method to printGames method, since that describes more precisely what this method does. So let's see how we're going to print the games using the game class. We're going to use string interpolation with the dollar sign and the brackets. And then for each game, we need to access its properties. I do that using the dot. So inside the brackets, I'm using game.date, game.type, game.score, incorporating them into a string. So let's fast forward and quickly play a game to see if it works. And I put a breakpoint in the for each loop. And when I hover over the games list, I can see the game item and the properties which is way more precise and organized than just a string. And everything works, we're still printing the game, but now our code is cleaner. 
And that's a super powerful feature of strongly typed languages. It's very helpful for developers to know exactly what type of data we're working with. And this can be quite a complex concept to understand at first. So watch this chapter again if you need and read the links provided in the show notes for more details. It's perfectly normal not to understand these things at first.